Okay, then let's start uh, the menstrual cycle. Here, uh, the, we learned about the primordial follicle. Need a little knowledge of uh, primordial follicle, primary follicle, graphene follicle. Likewise, let us revise once about that particular issues. That uh, primary follicle, primordial follicle. What is the difference we are seeing between the primary follicle and primordial follicle? In case of primary follicle, primordial follicle, simple squamous epithelium is seen over. When it was turned into the simple cuboidal epithelial cells, that we call it as primary follicle. In both cases, we are seeing the primary oocyte. The primary oocyte, who is it? Uh, Neophys 1 and uh, prophase 1. That eventually that various events will go on here and uh, that particular events made this primary follicle. Primary follicle is uh, turned into graphene follicle. So that story will end here actually that uh, uh, that in case of graphene follicle, when we go, the graphene follicle is with theca externa and uh, the theca interna, then the membrana granulosa, the cells of the membrana granulosa that we have seen, and the fully mature graphene follicle structure we discussed earlier, that uh, cumulus euphorus and corona radiata, then below that, jona pellucida, that below that the Jonah pellucida and then secondary oocyte. This is a story we learned in the case of uh, uh, the follicular development here. Follicular development, the fully mature graphene follicle is uh, present like this uh, that we are seeing earlier. Okay, so let us see the same issues that uh, where do you see this kind of primary follicle that we need to go. Okay, so if you take the ovary, in case of ovary, as I remind you once again, in case of ovary, there is a germinal epithelium. Then after, below that, we can see the tunica albuginia, that there is a layer called tunica albuginia, then cortex. Okay, so it is essential here to revise the previously learned issues. The cortex contains many primary follicles. This cortex containing many primary follicles. Okay, so these primary follicles which are present in the cortex are having primary oocytes. Primary follicles are having primary oocytes. So many developing primary follicles are present here. So these primary follicles contain primary oocytes. Then uh, this is up to from the birth till the age of puberty, this is the situation. From the birth, from the till the age of puberty, this is the situation. Primary follicles are present, which contain primary oocyte, which is at uh, meiosis 1 and prophase 1 stage. Okay, from the birth till the age of puberty. So when the puberty age comes, what happens? When the puberty age comes, so we need to start the story from GnRH, isn't it? GnRH, which is released from hypothalamus, gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus will come to the pituitary gland and promote the secretion of anterior pituitary. GTH from anterior pituitary is going to promote the secretion of two hormones, gonadotropin hormone. FSH and LH. So what is the function of FSH? FSH now, whatever the primary follicles we have, whatever the primary follicles we have, among all the primary follicles, this story will end in the earlier class, that uh, nearly one to two millions of primary follicles are present and in that, uh, uh, by the age of puberty, only 60,000 uh, follicle, 60 to 80,000 of follicles will remain in each ovary that we have seen. Leftover follicle, from these particular follicle, one of the follicle is going to mature in the form of graphene follicle. So by the name, follicle stimulating hormone, what it can do? It can convert a primary follicle into 
graphene follicle it can convert a primary follicle into graphene follicle now we know what happens when the graphene follicle is formed what happens a graphene follicle is formed means that will that will have the theca externa theca interna and theca interna of the graphene follicle is going to secrete the hormone called estrogen theca interna of the graphene follicle start the secretion of estrogen that means a series of events you need to understand so uh, that the graphene follicle is must for us so let me read the graphene follicle also once for you that uh, uh, not to get confused so even we learned in earlier class so i'll show you one after another the theca externa then the red line i'm drawing theca interna and then the membrana granulosa membrana granulosa okay so then after that the left over cavity is antrum cavity then corona radiata below the corona radiata we'll see zona pellucida that there is a layer called zona pellucida and below that the uh, innermost is going to be secondary oocyte this is cumulus oophorus antrum cavity now let's say this theca externa that means uh, with this particular we need to run actually so theca externa theca interna membrana granulosa antrum cavity then corona radiata zona pellucida secondary oocyte these are must for us so that's why i am explaining them back again so let me uh, label it for you let me label all these for you so from i i will start from here so from the top so what is that the theca externa okay so below that we will find theca interna okay have we lost this no matter no matter we we'll get it okay so theca externa below that theca interna okay so below that membrana granulosa membrana granulosa should know the all the layers here that this is the antrum cavity then the corona radiata we have discussed proliferous but not mentioned anywhere in the text uh, then zona pellucida zona pellucida then this is uh, cumulus oophorus which is uh, still having some connection that uh, secondary oocyte is having some connection that what do you say uh, connection with the membrana granulosa that we say cumulus oophorus so what is this this is graphene follicle fully mature follicle simply what we are saying follicle stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone will convert the primary follicle into graphene follicle whenever a graphene follicle is formed the graphene follicle containing theca interna can start the secretion of estrogen hormone that we need to understand okay so let's go the total uh, scenario here so uh, from here onwards i am going to begin over we know this is uh, fimbriae infundibulum ampullae isthmus so i'm going little fast here we know this all total so that along with the uterus this is the uterus so cyclic events we are trying to understand that particular cyclic event so for this uh, this is the primary follicle the developing primary follicle so uh, we need to start from the story here so whenever the gnrh from the hypothalamus secrete the secreted from the hypothalamus will go and stimulate the gth of the anterior pituitary gth include two follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone we want first fsh fsh will come and make the development of one of the primary follicle as so many of primary follicles are present here they may one of the primary follicle to develop in the form of this graphene follicle one of them only okay so one of the primary follicle will develop in the form of graphene follicle okay so whatever the graphene follicles who developed here 
we'll find here we'll find here i can't show clearly because that's microscopy so if you want to see the graphene follicle you can see here so this graphene follicle release the estrogen that makes the development of secondary sexual characters in female what next luteinizing hormone we have one more hormone luteinizing hormone so next lh will come and levels of the lh started increasing that leads to the form is that ovulation process that ovulation what is ovulation need to see here what is ovulation we'll take another page that ovulation means release of that uh, the secondary oocyte so i'll show you then again we'll make colors theca externa theca interna and uh, our membrana granulosa then who who came out that Oh, who came out? Secondary oocyte, which is surrounded with zona pellucida and corona radiata. Zona pellucida and corona radiata is came came out. We call this process as ovulation, which was stimulated by luteinizing hormone. Okay, so ovulation release of secondary oocyte. See, I am using the word secondary oocyte. Why I am not using the ovum? That because secondary oocyte is still in meiosis two and metaphase two. In this stage only, it is present. So that uh, is not yet completed. When it is completed, meiosis two, then only we will find the ovum. That so-called ovum is formed there at the time. Till the time, secondary oocyte along with zona pellucida and zona pellucida and corona radiata. Released out from the ovary, released out from the ovary. What do you call the process as ovulation? We call the process as ovulation. And after the ovulation, those who remain, that uh, those who remain, the remaining graphene follicle can be called as carpus luteum. Remaining graphene follicle is said to be as carpus luteum. And this carpus luteum is going to start the secretion of a hormone called progesterone. This hormone called progesterone. Now, let us make it out. Everything in one place. I am trying to make everything in one place. This is the ovary. Then that contain many primary follicle. Among the primary follicle, one of the primary follicle. Is matured in the form of graphene follicle, and the ovulation occurs. Ovulation occurs, and after the ovulation, any one of the ovary, either that one right or left. After the ovulation, the remaining part. What do you say? The remaining part, the graphene, the remaining portion is said to be the carpus luteum. That is called carpus luteum. Let me show you the tetra externa interna membrana granulosa. Haven't you observed this? That there is no opening for the ovary. That how does the secondary oocyte will be released over? Secondary oocyte will be released by the rupture of ovarian wall. That need to be released by the rupture of ovarian wall. So this secondary oocyte which get released out is collected by the infundibulum. With their fimbriated funnels, infundibulum with their fimbriated funnels. Now, so I am I am trying to reduce the secondary oocyte size. So this uh, this is collected actually. So where it is present now, the secondary oocyte is present in fallopian tube. Secondary oocyte is there in fallopian tube and waiting for. The spam to come, waiting for the spam to come. Little bit confusing. Just to focus here. With, the, with various steps, we'll go for this. So I get started from here. I'll I'll come back again from GnRH. I started from the GnRH of hypothalamus that goes to the anterior pituitary that makes the penetrate that uh, the stimulation of GTH of anterior pituitary. There we said there are two FSH. FSH make the development of the primary follicle into graphene follicle. And the graphene follicle releases the hormone called estrogen. Then are uh, these particular graphene follicles stimulated by LH? Then LH leads the formation of ovulation. 
after ovulation remaining is called as corpus luteum and lh makes the corpus luteum to secrete a hormone called progesterone this is the total story corpus luteum is making the secretion of progesterone so now you need to understand this corpus luteum is going to secrete the progesterone so what progesterone do progesterone let us remind once this layer the epimetrium myometrium endometrium we learned this, that uh, in case of uh, female uh, uterus there are three layers i said to you outermost is epimetrium mean below myometrium then endometrium now i am drawing the blue color with the endometrium layer it is endometrial layer the progesterone will make the thickening of the endometrium layers so what will be there inside that uh, mucus layers and blood capillaries can be seen over so thickening of the endometrium layer for blood capillaries why why because that when sperm comes here and uh, fertilize with this fallopian tube here it is isn't it that fertilization occurs the zygote will come and uh, develop here only for 9 months isn't it so that's why the preparations are going on what are the preparations are going on the, the ovulation results the formation of corpus luteum and secondary oocyte will come and wait in the fallopian tube then corpus luteum secreted progesterone will come and uh, makes the thickening of endometrium layer that is very very important here the progesterone thickens endometrium layer thickens endometrium layer what is there in endometrium layers that uh, mucus and blood capillaries that is very very important here to understand this procedure the mucus and blood capillaries are present okay so then this is the story when when the sperm won't come that means when sperm is not coming that that means no coitus no coitus that uh, secondary oocyte will wait here itself let me draw the secondary oocyte we are missing okay secondary oocyte will wait here only when sperm won't come if fertilization don't happen the secondary oocyte which is there in the meiosis 1 and uh, the prophase uh, meiosis 2 metaphase 2 there only it will disintegrate okay it will disintegrate corpus luteum is also going to be disintegrate and form corpus albicon corpus luteum is also going to be disintegrate in the form of corpus albicon degeneration we are talking about it will be degenerated in the form of corpus albicon so this is gone and corpus luteum turned into corpus albicon no progesterone if there is no progesterone these endometrium layers which are there in the thickened in the uterus will be released out the release of endometrium layers along with the blood and mucus layers are released out that we say the beginning of puberty that is uh, said to be as beginning of puberty okay what next what next again the same procedure will go on again the same procedure that means again the day 1 gnrh start uh, uh, release gnrh of hypothalamus will stimulate the formation of will stimulate the formation of gth of anterior pituitary that makes the liberation of follicle stimulating hormone so that makes the liberation of follicle stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone will make the maturation one of the primary follicle again become graafian follicle mature graafian follicle theca interna is going to release the estrogen hormone then after ovulation process occurs ovulation means that uh, release of uh, secondary oocyte into the coelomic cavity collected by the infundibulum and the secondary oocyte along with the zona pellucida and corona radiata will wait for sperms that fertilization process and the remaining after ovulation that ovulation done by lh hormone after ovulation the remaining graafian follicle is called corpus luteum corpus luteum secrete progesterone what progesterone can do progesterone thickens the endometrium layers of uterus 
progesterone is thickening the endometrium layers of uterus. Again, if the sperm won't come, if the sperm don't come here, so what happens? So that uh, secondary oocyte will degenerate. Again, the same, same things will go on. Secondary oocyte will degenerate. Okay. Then corpus luteum will degenerate in the form of corpus albicans. Corpus luteum is degenerated in the form of corpus albicans. Then these, uh, the, now the progesterone is stopped, isn't it? So that's why all the endometrium layers will release in the form of menstrual cycle, that is continuation. So total this process will go on and uh, for every 28 days, this cycle will go on, okay? So now we'll go in the text manner, text manner, let, let us see. So how to see in the text manner that uh, menstrual cycle begins with the liberation of endometrium layer, which begins with endometrium layer, releasing mucus and blood capillaries. Endometrium layers are lost out from the uterus and uh, along with the blood capillaries. That is the beginning of the first stage of menstrual cycle. What next? One of the another primary follicles to start mature and form the graphene follicle. What next? Ovulation. That means the graphene follicle, ovulation occurs, a new secondary oocyte will come and wait in the fallopian tube. After ovulation, remaining is called as corpus luteum that secretes the progesterone that thickens the endometrium layer. So this cycle will go on. This cycle will go on. Just imagine that let's talk about uh, uh, the successful case what is a successful case so for that even i'll start from the beginning uh, many primary follicles are present each ovary containing 60000 to 80000 primary follicles one among them is developed in the form of graphene follicle then uh, as usual we need to draw this uh, infundibulum ampulla and isthmus with uh, uterus vagina Okay, so ovulation occurs, that carpus luteum is formed. Second oocyte release in the silomic cavity will come into the fallopian tube. At the same time, if the sperm will come and fertilization occurs, need to see what happens. Okay, so let me take secondary oocyte. This will go on. Carpus luteum thickening the endometrium layers will go on. Okay, so blood capillaries, endometrium layers is go on. Secondary oocyte, at what stage it is present? Meiosis 2 and metaphase 2. Meiosis 2 at metaphase 2. By the penetration of the spam, secondary oocyte completes the meiosis 2. That means anaphase 2, telophase 2 is completed. A ovum and polar body is formed again. An ovum and polar body. With that ovum, spam will go for fertilization. That means zygote is formed that zygote will come here and go for implantation. So here you see there is no menstruation. There is no release of endometrium layer blood meter, isn't it? So that means in case a successful issue, that means fertilization if it occurs, carpus luteum will remain for two more months. That uh, endometrium, uh, after that placenta will take care of it. That all we'll discuss in embryonic development. Two separate situations I'm talking. If spam won't come, if no fertilization, carpus luteum will degenerate in the form of carpus albicum, no secretion of progesterone, and these all these endometrium layers which are thickened for implantation for the development of embryo will be released out. Okay, so next, if at all fertilization occur, if fertilization occur, the zygote uh, will form and endometrium layers, thickened endometrium layers along with the blood capillaries will stay there and they provide nourishment to the developing embryo. So this is the story. Okay, so uh, that from this particular story, how it is given in the textbook, that also we need to see. Now let us see, the, the, the things we learned here, we have to correlate with the text uh, statements here. Uh, we'll start from structure of ovum, then we'll go with the menstrual cycle. The ovum that is shed from the ovary is not fully mature. It is arrested in the metaphase 2 of the maturation division, meiosis 2. That uh, meiosis 2. It is surrounded by zona pellucida and uh, corona radiata. Zona pellucida and corona radiata. Between the cell membrane, 
vitaline membrane we can say zona pellucida a distinct space called perivitaline space is seen over let us draw here this is secondary oocyte so called and uh, then after that is surrounded by a little space is there perivitaline space that uh, after that that was surrounded by zona pellucida the glycoprotein layer zona pellucida then after corona radiata is there this is called secondary oocyte they separate from the ovum during first meiotic division in it lies the first polar body is also present but that will be separated we can ignore that okay next carpus luteum what is carpus luteum after ovulation the granulosa cell in the follicle the granulosa cell in the follicle proliferate and are transformed into yellowish glandular mass called carpus luteum here itself we can see in the diagram developing follicles you can see in the diagram and one of the fully mature graffian follicle with theca externa interna membrana granulosa the release of the secondary oocyte with zona pellucida corona radiata liberated and leftover is called carpus luteum leftover is said to be carpus luteum okay so these carpus luteum persists for about 14 days during this period it secretes progesterone carpus luteum is going to secrete progesterone and at the end of functional life it degenerate and form a mass of fibrous tissue called carpus albicans that is a white body carpus albicans is a white body if the ovum is fertilized in case if the fertilization occur late in the pregnancy the carpus luteum persists nearly about 3 to 4 months at the time we call it as carpus luteum of pregnancy the progesterone secreted by is it is essential for the maintenance of pregnancy because what is the major function of progesterone that endometrial layer thickening and maintenance of the endometrium layers of the uterus okay so that means uh, thickened endometrium layers will be maintained by progesterone itself that means in case if progesterone is not there if it is less in female during pregnancy there are all the possibilities of abortion that means endometrium layer along with the embryo may come out so that's why that all the possibilities are there so that's why progesterone simply we say that is maintain the pregnancy in first the first few months after that uh, the carpus luteum no longer needed the placenta begins to secrete uh, progesterone whatever progesterone is must for 9 months initially carpus luteum then after placenta will take care of it the series of changes that begins with the formation of an the series of changes that begins with the formation of an ovarian follicle and end with the degeneration of the carpus luteum constitute is called ovarian cycle constitute what is called ovarian cycle okay so let us see that cycle and the issues related to the cycle in an individual the formation of gametes takes place only during the reproductive period which begins at the age of puberty which is 10 to 14 years then uh, and ends between the 45 to 50 years with the onset of menopause and uh, in men it extends much longer in case of men men there is no physiological menopause we can't say menopause we can say andropause andropause is not uh, having the scientific basis that's what is i said it extends much longer okay so we will will give the comparison of this diagram but our we meant for to learn the menstrual cycle we learn the story now so how it is given in the text we need to see the reproductive cycle in the female primates like monkeys apes including human being is called as menstrual cycle which is called menstrual cycle the term menstrual cycle is applied to cyclical changes that occur in the endometrium every month the first menstruation begins at puberty which is called as menarche the first menstruation we say menarche okay end we called menopause which is at uh, 45 to 50 years of age we call it as menopause beginning is menarche end is menopause 
okay so that will be is this is about between 10 to 14 years and the end may occur at 45 to 50 years that only we calculated yesterday okay so in human females menstruation is repeated at an average interval of about 28 to 29 days one ovum is released we call it as ovulation during the middle of during the middle of each menstrual cycle the major events of the menstrual cycle are the four phases here one is menstrual phase follicular phase ovulatory phase and the blast is luteal phase that means whatever the primary story i explained over that the same story we are learning in the form of headings in the form of four stages okay so that first of all let's start menstrual phase the cycle starts with the menstrual phase or menstruation or menses we say when menstrual flow occurs with uh, and it lasts for three to five days the features here that we start from here that uh, endometrium layers of the uterus is started releasing that means you need to understand that was the previous uh, issue that means previous cycle issue so the first phase is the menstrual phase they get started from here so three to five days this endometrial layer second endometrium layer is going to be released for three to five days that we call it as menstrual flow results due to the breakdown of endometrial lining of the uterus and its blood vessels which forms a fluid that comes out through the vagina the menstruation occurs only if the released ovum is not fertilized that means in the fallopian tube whatever the secondary oocyte is present if it is not fertilized only this will occur absence of menstruation may be indicative of pregnancy means here what we said if fertilization occurs corpus luteum will remain and progesterone will remain and no release of this endometrium layer because they need to be used for implantation development of the baby so if no menstruation no menstrual flow means we can understand maybe that is indicative of pregnancy however it may also be caused sometimes to some other underlying causes like stress poor health also may be one of the reason for the delay of menstrual flow okay next second phase we'll go with follicular phase so what is follicular phase a new primary follicle during this phase a new primary follicle in the ovary grow to become a fully mature graphian follicle a primary follicle will develop into the various events we will planned earlier then that makes the fully mature graphian follicle with our third layer theca externa interna membrana granulosa likewise okay so then graphian follicles so what is in the follicular phase that we need to that's just the story in the land we need to correlate with that uh, headings that means we need to make the partition of the story into that four partitions four headings okay as a collective story i explained here so graphian follicle and simultaneously the endometrium of the uterus regenerates through proliferation these changes in the ovary and the uterus are induced by the changes in the level of pituitary and ovarian hormones the secretion of gonadotropins lh and fsh increases towards the end of the follicular phase that stimulates follicular development as well as secretion of estrogens by the growing follicle events of the follicular phase you need to understand in this manner okay primary follicle developed into graphian follicle in this phase this is a major event primary follicle developed into fully mature graphian follicle and that graphian follicle that secrete the hormone called estrogen okay towards the end of uh, the follicular phase and stimulate the follicular development as well as secretion of estrogen by the growing follicle what next what next ovulation that we say ovulatory phase both lh and fsh attain peak level in the middle of the cycle about 14th day this uh, will going to happen here the both fsh and lh attain the peak level of the in the middle of the cycle about 14th day rapid secretion of lh leading to 
okay we may say lh attain both peak level but now who is the leading one lh rapid secretion of the lh leading to its maximum level during the mid cycle is called lh surge that means what we require at this time we require ovulation which is done by luteinizing hormone that maximum lh will be found here in the mid cycle that means on the 14th day we call it as lh surge so it induces the rupture of graafene follicle and thereby the release of ovum secondary oocyte we call this process as ovulation okay ovulation next what next after the ovulation what is formed corpus luteum is formed so that corpus luteum we have to talk about in the luteal phase during the luteal phase the remaining parts of the graafene follicle transform into corpus luteum the corpus luteum secrete large amounts of progesterone and which is essential for the maintenance of the uterine endometrium layer that means whatever the corpus luteum formed here that start the thickening of the endometrium layers that in the luteal phase endometrium layer and uh, endometrium is necessary for implantation of the embryo blastocyst stage and other events of the pregnancy during pregnancy all events of the menstrual cycle during pregnancy all events of the menstrual cycle stop that means uh, no uh, corpus luteum formation into corpus albicum no menstrual flow that we can see all that uh, in case of pregnancy and fertilization occur during pregnancy all events of the menstrual cycle stop and there is no menstruation in the absence of fertilization the corpus luteum degenerates into a whitish body in as called corpus albicum this causes disintegration of the endometrium all this endometrium layer start disintegrating and uh, leading to the menstruation leading to menstruation leading to menstruation that is given as first phase of next menstrual cycle that means that is menstrual phase the cycle starts with the menstrual phase when menstrual flow occurs that uh, that is for 3 to 5 days then uh, after that uh, this, this menstrual cycle we have to talk about this menstrual cycle and uh, okay then what next next a new primary follicle starts the uh, the development here one of the primary follicle will develop into a graafian follicle and graafian follicle is going to be uh, release the hormone estrogen next what next ovulatory phase at this time fsh and lh may be peak but lh levels maximum lh levels at this time we say lh surge graafian follicle Uh, release the secondary oocyte and after that the remaining graafene follicle is called corpus luteum that we say luteal phase in case fertilization occur pregnancy will continue otherwise that endometrium layers are going to be liberated out to the vagina that is the beginning of next menstrual cycle which begins with menstrual phase it's a cycle it will go on with that menstruation development of a new follicle and release of graft ovulation process and then formation of corpus luteum for the maintenance of pregnancy all these are the continuous events in human being the menstrual cycle ceases around 50 years of age and it is referred as the menopause natural cessation of menstrual cycle that means stop naturally they get stopped over the cyclic events uh, shown here in the diagram so we will go there cyclic menstruation is an indicator of normal reproductive phase it extends between menarche and uh, menopause okay so let us try to understand we will we'll see in the form of boxes here so that means uh, the first box this is the first box in this box a explanation of the uterine endometrium layers you can see here uterine endometrium layers so we know the four phases let us correlate number 1 menstruation number 2 follicular phase number 3 ovulatory phase number 4 luteal phase then again menstruation that is in the next cycle okay so let us try to understand this particular so uh, we, along with the scale we need to go with first menstruation so menstruation we need to understand 
this area that we said over it last about three to five days menstruation last about three to five days that's showing that endometrium layers along with the blood capillary are releasing out through the vagina okay then after then after uh, this only i'm showing endometrium layers only i'm showing so that thickness is decreased okay so then after in follicular phase no much changes in this particular area but when ovulation occurs at the middle of the 14th day corpus luteum is formed progesterone formation indicates that the thickness of the endometrium layers increase only uh, the, that uh, uterus i am talking about so in the luteal phase you can see the maximum thickness of the endometrium layers as a maximum okay so let's go let's go to the uh, some more area the second box that now i shown only uterus to you the second one second one we have to talk about the ovarian hormone levels okay initially follicle is formed is fsh isn't it that fsh follicular stimulating hormone follicular stimulating hormone makes the graphene follicle for the release of estrogen that's why you can see estrogen is at peak level after the formation of corpus luteum we can see the progesterone okay so estrogen and progesterone that stages that ovarian hormone level we just talked about and next next we will go with uh, uh, follicle development so during uh, the menstrual flow is uh, going on at the, at the beginning of the primary follicle slowly develop into secondary follicle tertiary follicle or graphene follicle at the 14th day ovulation occurs corpus luteum is formed then after that corpus luteum is going to degenerate and finally it becomes corpus albicans if there is no the coitus copulation or sperm penetration okay so fsh and lh levels fsh and lh levels is a still confusing thing actually uh, that we have to learn in order but uh, our text says fsh and lh attain peak levels in the middle of the 14th day that we can see in the graph also okay so uh, that is about uh, this particular fsh that means here you can understand that lh when it reaches to the peak level that leads to the ovulation okay so fsh is dominating initially for the formation of graphene follicle now let us try to understand everything in one place these are the cyclic events that we need to see them in detail okay so this is the diagram which explains about which explains about the phases of different places phases of uh, ovarian cycle in different places okay in different places so let me show you the menstruation at a time i am going to explain now at a time that means during menstrual phase what happens in the uterine uterine events ovarian hormone levels ovarian events and events in the pituitary hormone okay so at a time we need to see here that means on that particular phase what the remaining people are doing menstruation during menstruation menstrual flow occurs that means the blood vessels and blood capillaries of endometrium layers thick and endometrial layers are going to be released out okay so at this time we can see here no uh, fall the graphian follicle that's why the estrogen progesterone levels will be very low we need to talk about the progesterone due to the absence of progesterone only this menstrual flow is going to happen okay so at the same time slowly a development is started actually in case of ovary new primary follicle started developing okay so at this time fsh level is little ahead that makes the secretion of a, a primary follicle into the graphene follicle okay so that's it that's about menstruation so follicular phase So now we need to see here follicular phase. So let us see follicular phase. So what is follicular phase? There is no much changes you can see here in this particular follicular phase in uterus because we need progesterone for development of thickening of endometrium layer. So we are here follicular phase, this area. Okay. So the in this area we can see in ovary much developmental changes are going on. That means a development of a primary follicle into graphene follicle for that who is required who is required fsh is required 
follicular stimulating hormone. Okay, so that is helpful for this particular graphene follicle maturation. Okay, next. The 14th day, ovulatory phase. Now that along with the FSH, LH is also reached to peak. LH, FSH reaches its maximum, but LH is more than that, isn't it? So that we call it as LH surge, which results the graph that ovulation process. You see that in the ovary, the graphene follicle is liberated the secondary side. What do you say that is in the mid 14th day? Okay, remember this number dates also. That because that when we go to the reproductive health with these dates, we are going to uh, do some uh, the, the preventive contraceptive techniques we need to discuss over. That means simple. So if any uh, any contraceptive should focus here, isn't it? That means ovulation process, progesterone involvement. So likewise, okay. Either you have to prevent the spam or either you have to prevent the ovulation or either you need to uh, stop the uh, passage of the spam during uh, ovulation at what day that is 14th day the 14th day must is going to be secondary oocyte will wait in the fallopian tube okay so by the release of uh, graphene follicle carpus lydium formation you can see the progesterone carpus lydium is formed then you can see the maximum endometrium layer thickening you can see here in this area so that means that is co-related what we are talking about okay then so when it is degenerated carpus albicans then cycle go on that remenstrual flow will go on okay so uh, the reading is going to be a little bit difficult here that you need to know the story first of all you need to know the story okay so while reading in the text even you need to follow the norms that means menstrual phase that means if you frame a table that will be much better table how to form you see here menstrual phase that how much time it lasts about three to five days follicular phase here also we will get the time that uh, till 5 to 13th day that means here we are taken 5 isn't it so that means 4 to 13th we can take 4 or 6 to 13th day follicular phase 14th day itself is the ovulatory phase that means remaining 15 to 28 you can take a luteal phase so time is over okay next event event wise so what happens here endometrial lining of the uterus will release out through the menstrual as a menstrual flow that is the thing here isn't it uh, then uh, a follicular phase so what is happening here development of the primary follicle into secondary follicle development of primary follicle into secondary follicle okay that we can see in case of follicular event of follicular so whenever a primary follicle develops into graphene follicle, what happened? Estrogen. Okay, that we'll discuss. So event is happened. Ovulatory phase. What is the event is happened here? The ovulation process. Release of graphene follicle. The secondary side will be liberated. That we say ovulation formation of carpus luteum. Okay, luteal phase. What is happening here? Formed carpus luteum secrete the progesterone making thickening of the endometrium layers that means for uh, getting ready for pregnancy getting ready for the implantation of the embryo blastocyst okay and here only if no fertilization luteum will turn into carpus albicans so time period event the two items with this next the third event that is the only confusing thing actually here that is the only confusing thing hormones in menstrual phase, do we have any hormone in peak? No, almost all of everything is done. That levels of uh, car that uh, estrogen and progesterone down. Okay, so follicular phase, which hormone is more that we need to talk about? As a common aspect they explain here, like LH and FSH are increases towards the end of the follicular phase. So we'll write it, we'll write it. LH and FSH will increase towards the end of follicular phase and stimulate the follicular development as well as secretion of estrogen by the growing follicle. So we'll write two points. LH and FSH increases towards the end of follicular phase. That is from pituitary gland. Okay. Then from here, that estrogens from ovary. So these two, these two points will write as a hormonal involvement. Ovulatory, ovulatory. LH and FSH attain peak level. That is the first point. Then uh, LH surge, 
that is also will rise at maximum level then uh, it induces the event we wrote already okay next luteal phase hormone hormone corpus luteum secrete large amount of progesterone which is essential for the maintenance of uterine endometrium okay so that means what i am saying here you just frame a table otherwise that always it seems to be a confusing thing to you okay so table how to make the table i am giving here so while reading the text so you make the phases here the four phases menstrual phase follicular phase ovulatory phase luteal phase four phases here okay next so first how much time it will take over out of 28 days how much time it will take over next event what is happening here that event okay event what is happening next that hormonal involvement hormonal involvement we have two types of hormonal involvement here one is uh, anterior pituitary involvement one is ovarian hormonal involvement okay so if you fill the table you will be able to understand if you fill the table that make you not to get confusion most times questions will come from here only so you frame the table and uh, take a screenshot you frame the table and just send it to me if we have any if any corrections are required that we'll discuss in the next class